Hey, 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 everyone. It's me, Tamara Brown. Who am I? I am an author, blogger, website designer, as well as a publishing consultant and the host of Blah Diaries. Um, Sorry, got a little tongue tied. But anyway, a Blah Diaries. And so today we are going to discuss the ghost of relationship past. So what is Blah? Blah is dealing with broke, dealing with your broke dealing with your lonely and as well as dealing with your angry and horny and overcoming it and so i wanted to target women of the age of 40 because a lot built 40 and over because a lot of times we think that we are over something we think that we are over someone sometimes we're dealing with broke because we haven't dealt with the shattered pieces in our hearts Sometimes we are lonely because we tell ourselves that we don't need friends, we don't need relationships, that we don't need nobody, that we got this all by ourselves. And the truth is, is that we are lying to each other and ourselves. Uh, we're angry because of past hurts, people who have hurt us, relationships, friendships, parents, cousins, whomever. Um, and we have to get over that hurdle. And horny because two reasons for me. One of the reasons is, is I've chosen to be celibate for over for over 11 years. Also, the challenges of being horny for things that you want in your life. Success, love, um, money, <laughs> um, friendships, decent friendships, decent, decent friendships. Those are so important in our lives. And sometimes we have to check ourselves. Because sometimes it ain't all about the, it's not always about all the haters. Sometimes it's us and we got to fix us. And so we got to fix you and I got to fix me. So anyway, going on relationships <laughs> of the past. So let me, let, me, let me explain a little bit about the ghost of relationship past. Honey, I got some ghosts. And so the first relationship ghost was the very first person that I dated. And he he set the tone. And this gentleman set the tone. And first of all, my family didn't like him. My cookie definitely didn't like him. And he, the, the one thing I will say is he was always a gentleman. He took me out on a really nice date. We really connected well. Um, but he was a playboy. I mean, he was a playboy. He had fun. And I came to the conclusion that I was at a conference. I, I'll never forget. I was 16. No, I was 15. And I was at a bigger conference, Vocational Industrial Clubs of America. And I was at a conference. And I see him walking with this girl. And they are holding hands. And all of my friends, we're coming from the pool. And all of my friends are sitting there watching me be embarrassed beyond measure. And it set the tone. Set the tone. I said, Jesus Christ, help me on earth. I was so embarrassed. And I cried the entire conference. But he set the tone because I thought that, I, that's, that it would always happen. And then I started to self-sabotage myself and say, well, I'm not pretty enough. She light-skinned. She got nice hair. She got a pretty smile. He want her because of that. And it's all my insecurities. And my insecurities were deep. My insecurities were I was poor. <laughs> all right? I was poor. I was the poorest of my friends. Um, I was smart, but I was poor. Um, I didn't dress like everybody else. And even though we was in uniform, believe me, my skirt was a struggle skirt. Okay. And my jacket, believe me, I packed a lot of groceries and cleaned up a lot of houses to get that red Vicar jacket. Okay. I did a lot of things to get that red jacket. I'm telling you from selling popsicles on the corner, um, whatever I could to get this red jacket. Cause it, it meant so much to me about this. This organization meant the world to me. And so I did, I, I overcompensated again um, in the very beginning. That was probably the first organization that I just probably worked myself like a Hebrew slave. But I love that organization. Um, and so he set the tone. And at the time, who told me he was cheating was the father of my children. And I learned a lot. That left shot, that ghost was... You weren't good enough. 
and then I met my children's father and and so let me clear the air I will not um bash him or anything like that but the ghost of that was get out of a let me just put it this way get out when you know you should get out get out when the love is gone move move forward um and that's not to and that was my fault but the ghost left a, a big ghost so those ghosts and then the ghost was bigger with him because i spent all of my childhood and part of my adulthood with him and all these turbulent things happen all these things happen we and so then i went on to meet um my love at the time and and it still is in my own way i'm just trying to figure out if we gonna i don't know what we're gonna do but anyway that that part of it was he came into my life he came into my life in a weird way he was incarcerated um i met him before he was incarcerated and when he came out here we were connecting the dots here we were in this relationship and i realized that i was more broken than him so let me say that again i was more broken than he would ever be he he was institutionalized but i was ghost of bad relate of relationships it's, i was traumatized i was pstd so i was so nervous about what i did what i didn't do what i couldn't do and i just never forget it and i can share this is that I asked every time he we had a cell phone and he had one and I had one and mine's died and I said can I, I kept asking him can I use your phone please and I was checking up on the kids we were at a I was at a party and I was like can I use your phone and he pulled me to the side and he was like am I your man and I was like yeah why do you keep asking me to use your phone and I said I thought it was courteous it's courteous and I don't want to violate and you got to take off the passwords and he just handed me the phone and said why would I hide who I am there's no, I'm not doing anything. I'm not sleeping with no broads. Here's my password. Here's my phone. And there's no password on my phone. Just use it. You don't have to ask me, your man, to. And that was a lot of positive things about him because he taught me that. But those ghosts of the past sometimes stagnate us to have really decent relationships. Those ghosts come back. He going to cheat on me. He going to lie to me. I'm not going to be good enough. I'm jacked up. My heart. And so your heart has all these ghosts. And they just swarming around your heart. Coming in and out your mouth. Behind your head. Popping you in your head. Saying, "Mm mm-mm. He don't really want you. He just want the booty and he going to run. And so then you become different. You don't want to. You sometimes. For me, I I got a bear. If you ever see Tasha Mack. That's my girl. Emotional walls. My notion, my emotional walls are so high that it's, <laughs> you need like seven ladders to climb it. Seven, six feet ladders because I'm so protective of my heart. And I'm so protective of if I let that wall come down. And now it's starting to spill. Up. The past relationship walls are now turning into friendship walls. And my relationship walls, I didn't went and <laughs> I didn't bought my cement. I got my spackle. I got my um, I got my um, my the stuff, and I'm just I'm just putting up those walls, because those ghosts the past come back and they haunt you if you allow it. And then it, those ghosts, their their job is to instill fear, right? No, he don't love you. Mm mm. Have you ever been asleep? And he just up this whisper, girl. I know he cheating. So now you need to smell his drawers and his balls. <laughs> he cheating. He cheating. I know he cheating. I know you with boo boo. I know you. Why you looking at her? So then our insecurity start to speak out. Cause and that's the ghost. That's the ghost of insecurity. Girl, he looking at her butt. He like her. He like her. Look, look, Tamara. He don't want you. You fat. She skinny. You lost. So mess up this relationship, sabotage this relationship, destroy this relationship. Mm-mm. That guy talking to you, he think you got some money. He think you got tax returns. He think you making money with your authors. And then you start laughing like, listen, dude, I'm broke. <laughs> Insecurities. 
And so whenever I develop a character, because I'm an author and I have the book Love Has No Waste Size and Cash and Money that's now out, I, I everybody was like, you mastered insecurity. I said, no, I mastered it because that's, <laughs> honey, that is my life. I know about insecurities. I know how to put a book. Mm -mm, I can't be your friend. I can't be your lover. No, sir, we not going out on a date. I can't, what? So you can hurt my feelings and break my heart and talk about me and take my little bit of self-esteem and destroy it? No, sir. Mm -mm. So I'm not giving you a chance. I'm not even, no, I want your number. No, I want your address. No, I want you, no, you can't give me a sandwich. Why are you giving me a sandwich? You, what you, how many of us have been in that position? So those ghosts of the past put us in a place where we are so scared to move forward. And our relationships, and our friendships, and our family ships, and our siblings. We, um, mm, I don't, uh, uh, I'm not being your friend. I'm not forgiving you. You was talking about me. No, sir. Mm -mm. I'm not forgiving you because if I forgive you, if I forgive you, you're going to hurt me again. And that ghost, of the ghost of the past, the ghost of relationship past, and the ghost of insecurities, and the ghost of fears come up. Boom. Tamara, hell no, you can't go out with him. Why are you going to go out with that that fine, cute, big penis guy want to go out with you? And he likes skin? Girl, and he got dreads. And you know, back in the day, dreads was, a, you know, it still is. He got dreads? Why he want to? I kid you not. When I was a lawyer, my insecurity spoke so loud that it woke him up out of sleep. He'd be like, are you kidding me? I'd be like, no, I'm not going out with you. No, we can't go out to dinner because they just going to tell you, you you know, and, and it speaks so loud in our friendship. He said to me, Tamara, I can hear all. He said, what are you, what, are you serious? I'm telling you. And I'm like, no, no, you don't love me. You can have somebody better. He's like, Negro, I'm incarcerated. I can't. <laughs> And it was so funny. He said that to me yesterday and I couldn't help but laugh. He said, Negro, I'm incarcerated. Seriously, how bad can you get? How bad can I get? How can I have any help? <laughs> and I thought about it and I was like, it was just the way he said it. And he reminded me of the fact that sometimes you just let your insecurities take control. You let your ghosts come out. You let them come out. And how many of us have actually let our ghosts take control of what's going on with us how many times have we said nope i'm not giving him a chance that's your future husband and you say i pray for him i'm like god i ask for him and god bring him and you be like nope i can't talk to you because i don't want to talk to you my attitude stinks i'm not gonna be her friend no ma'am no no ma'am i can't even mm -mm. i think she's talking about me I think she's doing something to me because I said yesterday and sometimes we are so secure that we're insecure. And I'm going to say that again and again. Sometimes we are so secure that we're insecure of everything around us because I got to be secure. I got to secure my heart, my mind, and my soul. But sometimes we are so secure that we're insecure. And it speaks louder than you ever will. Because I'm telling you my story. I can't tell you about nobody else. I can tell you about Tamara P. Brown. Sometimes I can be so secure that I'm insecure. I'm skeptical of, I'm skeptical if you come with a pop, lollipop. I'm <laughs> like, why are you giving me that lollipop? Because our insecurities and our ghost of the past sometimes will take control of us and that's why we stay in broke because we actually thinking we heal i'm healed because i'm not giving no negro all men ain't ish he ain't ish now my not on my watch he ain't ish he okay it's you that's messed up it's you that's jacked up you just don't want to admit it and, and and I don't want to admit it. I want to admit shh, I messed up. That I'm scared to fall in love. I'm scared to. I have on my vision board. I told you guys I have a big white board on my wall that says. On it it says not be afraid to love. And I'm telling you I'm failing it terribly. 
It says not afraid to be open and make friends. Not be afraid that when somebody is nice to you that they have an ulterior motive. That's my story, guys. I'm telling you my story. And, and I hope that I can help someone because we got to heal. We got to, first of all, we got to let the, that bandit that's on our heart, we got to fix that. We got to, we got to clean that wound. And it's a quote that's said by Wumi that the wound that is open lets the light shine in. Sometimes you have to let that, you got to take that band-aid off that wound, let it breathe, and let the light shine in so that it can heal. But some of us are just covering up with new band-aids. Like, nah, I'm going to cover that up. Nah, I can't. I'm good. I got a band-aid over it. And it's not healing. And I'm telling you my story so that I can tell you that no one else can go through what I went through or wasn't healing. I wasn't healing and it's so it's so it's so it's so relevant and so obvious that I'm not healed that when I'm talking to poor Lloyd and I can say his name, he know who he is, and I told him I did a podcast and I talk about him so he knows that the poor thing he just don't know he said to me I'm so lost <laughs> and I love him. I can be honest with people and say that I love him dearly, but I'm not going to go through what, what I went through with relationship one and relationship two. And I'm not going to be the butt of nobody's jokes and I'm not going to get my heart broken. So I'm going to put back on that band-aid and say, I, I love you, but I love you from a distance. Emotional walls, baby. I'm not going to let you get here. And I love the game because, and I love being Mary Jane because that's the typical situations that african-american women not all like myself are going through i'm so scared to like he got a motive he said something wrong with him something wrong he what he gotta be oh god and even if it wasn't Lloyd and it was another guy, I would find something wrong with him. I would find a way to sabotage the relationship. I would say that he cheating. I would say he was doing this because I'm scared. Women in our 40s can't date like we date like we dated in our 20s. It's not the same. It's not the same. I hope um, that I can help you with this and say and help me too because i need all the help i can get counseling she told me that listen she gonna start <laughs> she she be stressed out she be laying on the couch with me she be on her couch i mean she like to marry this i i don't know what else to do for you dear but i'm just telling you my story and bringing a little humor to it that sometimes we cover up our hearts because we ain't i'm not letting you hurt me no more I just, I can't be, because it, it, it falls in, so I'd be lonely. Because lonely feels comfortable, but I told you yesterday that I don't like it. I don't like being lonely. I don't like being broke. Eat both ways, right? And I definitely don't like being angry. I don't like being horny. I'm just going to be straight up. Everybody can pretend like they like being horny. And sometimes we stay in broken relationships just so we won't so we can pretend that we're not lonely sometimes people stay in love in loveless marriages and relationships with their dudes and if you like girls with their girls because it looks good i've been with my dude for 40 years but you don't even like him and he don't like you y'all so miserable together that it's just absolutely insane I don't want to be that way. So I got to break it. I got to break the chains. And you got to break the chains. Because being in something that's so miserable that it's, it's just comfortable. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to get comfortable. I'm just going to stay. I got to get uncomfortable. To be comfortable. I got to get uncomfortable. I got to step out on that door. And I got to just be like, you know what? If you get your feelings hurt, you learn the lesson from it. But at least that wound is getting some light. At least I'm killing the ghost and I'm not letting them control how I feel about myself, how I feel about another person, how I feel about anything in life, my career. I got to control it. So 
I hope today that I was able to help you and inspire you and encourage you by sharing my story. And that is the purpose of Blah Diaries is to tell you that sometimes we to close wounds, to heal, um, to break some chains. And so with that, I said I wasn't going into 30 minutes, even though I, I have 45 minutes on my thing. I'm not going to go 45. But one of the things that I want to say, and it's important, um, is... I am so excited about podcasting and excited that I'll be going on our that I'll be on iHeartRadio and I'm already on Google and iTunes and all that stuff. But the fact that I'm getting I'm very uncomfortable speaking because I I I told y'all before I don't speak perfect English. I don't do none of that. Right? I'm working on it, but I don't. I am a ghetto girl from Brooklyn. I mean, I know how to speak that way, but I'm just so ghetto. When I want to be ghetto sometimes, but and when I say ghetto, I, I just love slang, right? Because it identifies with me. I but I don't speak it all the time, but I just love it. And sometimes because I stutter, slang just saves me a little bit. So sometimes when you see people talking a certain way, ask them. Don't even ask. Sometimes they may have a speech impediment. Sometimes they may stutter. And that in order to, to not stumble over words, they talk fast. I do it all the time. So, guys, I want to thank you for listening. Oh, I want to tell you about something that's amazing. I've been telling you about Our Curls. If you listen to any of my past podcasts, Our Curls Inc. is a nonprofit organization that provides free wigs and makeover support services for women of color who are going through cancer, not just breast cancer, but any type of cancer. We are having our very first annual ribbon ball. Join us for an evening of bringing awareness of all types of cancers cancers, and their ribbon colors and how they affect our community. We're going to have 50-50 raffles, silent auctions, entertainment, and an open cash bar. A night of interactive fun for all. The price is forty-five dollars. We are in we are in dire need, and I say dire need, but it's the truth. Um, for sponsorships, we would like you to visit us on April twenty-seven, two thousand eighteen, at Classic Fives. It's going to be at twenty-four twenty-five North Fall, not North Falls. Okay, I'm gonna get that right, guys. See, I told you, Niagara Falls Boulevard, Amherst, New York, 14228. You guys can purchase your tickets at www.ourcurlsinc.org or Ticketly. If you cannot come, and I say this very, see, I'm going over, y'all making me go over, but for Our Curls Inc., I will go over. If you cannot come, sponsor a ticket, donate a basket, donate a book, donate your services, but this is important because we are dying from cancer versus surviving and our mission and our goal is survivorship survivorship and so in order for us to let you know that hey we're here free wigs can't beat it we have a support group online join us hear me just look up hear me our curls inc and it will pop up immediately. Join the group if you are a cancer survivor. We also have a caregivers group. Join it. We can't get anything. Again, it's about that band-aid. Remember I was saying that, you know, our wounds that we covered up with a nice little band-aid? Same here with cancer. Some of us are so wounded from cancer emotionally and mentally that we just keep changing the bandage. No, we're not going to deal with cancer. I, I had it. It's done. It's over with. I'm done. I'm, you know, I'm a survivor. But our mental health is, is deteriorating. And our depression is on an all-time high. And we angry at cancer and our peoples. And guys, we got to get it together. Open your mouths. Ask for help. There's survive. If you're in Buffalo, there's a wonderful survivorship clinic right there at Roswell Park amazing just strictly for survivorship we should be packing the house if we are having cancer because we survivors that is the one thing about us people as a as a people of color we are survivors we are warriors we are amazing things but when it comes to handling our issues mentally we'll get our booties in shape well some of us are exercise 
I'm still I, I I exercise today. I'm practicing salsa. I told if I told anybody I want a salsa with Debbie Allen. Anyway, but when it comes, we got nice clothes. We get our hair done every week, every two weeks, whatever the case may be. We get our nails did. We get our pedicures and our manicures. But when it comes to taking care of our health and our heads, our inside head, our brain, we like nah, mm mm. Cause you know why it's a, it's a sensitive organ. That that muscle, that's that it, is, it holds a lot of a lot our hearts and our head, and our brain holds all of this information of pain that we are not gonna share that, cause somebody gonna look at me like I'm just a straight fool. But we gotta let it go, and that's why we have these support groups. That's why we have these support services of survivors. I'm a breast cancer survivor, and I'm telling you that was a hot mess. I'm thinking I'm all right and. Girl, I, I, y'all, I went cuckoo for cocoa puffs. I'm telling you, that's why my, I went in. I'm serious. One day I was dealing with all this stuff, dealing with my son being sick, and I cried for 24 hours straight. That's not normal. And I said, let me run in there and go fast. I went in the walk-in clinic. I was like, hi, I need help. They was like, she's still crying. Ma'am, you just got to sign the paper. I was like, okay, I don't know why I got to sign the paper. We got to fix ourselves. We got to fix our hearts and our heads. Our mental health and our hearts. Fix, fix, fix. Can't fix nothing else. I promise you. I see it every day. Literally. People got it going off fly as hell. And they tow up. And they only want to admit it. I got it. Because, honey, I... And they don't got it. So, guys, thank you so much for listening to me. My name is Tamara Brown. I am an author, blogger, website designer, as well as a publishing consultant. I am the host of Blog Diaries. You can follow me on Twitter at Tam Loves to Write. You can follow me. Oh, my Lord. You can follow me at Instagram, Tam Loves to Write 39, and Facebook, Tam Loves to Write. Guys, let's stay connected. My website is www.tamlovestowrite.com. Hey, I have a book out. Cash and money. The price you pay for sleeping with Anika Sin. And if you read Love Has No Way Size, I have books on Amazon purchased. So it's Love Has No Way Size, Cash and Money, I'm Still Here, um, Blue's Treasure, Fat Girl Vigilante, Gatekeeper's Secrets. Just pick up a book. If you have Kindle Unlimited, I think I have three books on Kindle Unlimited. So please, guys, definitely, definitely join. Support Our Curls, Inc. Support, support, support. Guys, have a wonderful day and bye-bye.